My love, beautiful souls of Mystic Rules 1111. Back to Trooper in Dark into Light. Channel message. Okay, so I'm hearing they are going to jail. Okay, so somebody that you know, they, they've... They try to get out of this jail situation, okay? Somebody really, really try to get out of this jail situation. Okay, they 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 could try to bribe themselves out of this situation. Could have um, tried to run from the situation. But whatever the cost is, they they try to get out of it. But they're not going to be able to get out of it, okay? They're going to have to do some time, okay? Somebody has to do some time. I'm hearing 30 to, day, 30 to 60 days in jail minimum, okay? So there's an individual that's going to have to do 30 to 60 days minimum in jail. It could be more, but I'm hearing bare minimum 30 days, Okay. They, they could have took a plea deal and um, got probation parole, but with them getting probation parole, they decided to screw up on that probation parole, and now it's coming back on them. Because I'm hearing somebody not showing up for parole, probation or parole meeting, and they have a warrant. Okay, and so they they could be trying to run. Um, they're 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 gonna have to do the time. Okay, they did the crime, they have to do the time. If if you are involved with this person or um, hiding this person out or anything of that sort. Um, you may want to stay away because you don't want to be accessory to whatever is happening or you don't want to be obstruction of justice as well, especially if you've never been in trouble. Okay. You could have a good background. Um, if you're involved with this person in sort of any sort of way, this could actually cause complications in your life. This could cause problems in your life. Okay. Um, cause I am hearing somebody has never like been in trouble. Somebody has never broken the law or like been caught breaking the law and you may have somebody may have a really really good job as well or like a really good life and like you're hanging out with somebody or spending some time with somebody um and this person has broken the law okay they're they're not following the the procedures or protocol or whatever they're not following their guidelines okay they're not following the guidelines of their probation and parole and it's it's gonna get you in some trouble Okay, this could be this person could get you in some trouble. Okay, you don't want to be losing your job. You don't want to end up behind bars with this person. You don't want to end up with a charge. Like, so I'm I know I'm sure it's about you care about this person. You may love this person. It could be a family member. It could be a friend, a lover. But you don't want to have to pay the price because of this person. Okay, you don't want to. This person just thinks I'm hearing this person just thinks that they can do what they want. Okay, not not have to pay the consequences, not have to deal with the situation that they they put themselves in, because they put this they put themselves in the situation. Okay, so if they broke the law, they got put on probation, parole, and then they decided to miss their meetings or all that stuff, and they decided not to go meet with their parole probation officer or go to court. That's on them. Okay, that's on them. That that should be on you. Okay, even I'm hearing somebody, somebody like guilt tripping you, saying you should have reminded me, you should you should have brought me there. Um, I forgot. I overslept. Like, you should remind me to call them and, like, don't let them guilt trip you, okay? Don't let them make you feel bad that um, they made a mistake. It's not your responsibility to keep this person in check. It's not your responsibility to keep this person out of trouble, okay? We have to keep ourselves out of trouble. We have to take care of our own responsibilities. We're human beings, especially if you're over 18, okay? We, we, we have free will. We get to make our own choices, our own decisions. And so this individual... Um, they decided not to follow what they were supposed to follow. It's, it's on them. It's not on you. Okay? And I'm hearing also don't feel bad when this person goes to jail. I'm hearing somebody's going to feel bad. You might visit them in jail. You might um, put money on their books. Don't feel bad. They, you know, you, you do the crime. You got to do the time. I had to do the time. I did the crime. I had to do the time. Like, I was there at one point in my life. I had to be on probation for a long period of time. I had to see my PO. I had to do all that. I had to do these classes. I had to own up to my mistakes. I had to own up to my, my consequences for the, for the actions that I, I did when I was in active addiction. So, and you can't tell it's really, really foggy out right now. So, and that could be something too. That could be where, like, I just went reading off of that. Maybe somebody's confused about this, like, not knowing what to do. Or you could be around somebody that has a warrant and being confused about... Should you report this person? Should you call this person in? Should you help this person out? Or should you just like ignore this person, block this person and just kind of, you know, let things happen naturally? Okay. There's a lot of confusion here. And a lot of guilt too. I'm hearing guilt. Okay. You could be, you could be feeling really guilty. If this person gets picked up, I'm hearing you're feeling guilty. 
your grandparents about like you feel guilty because you feel like that you could have stopped or you could help this person out. But honestly, we have to figure that out ourselves. Okay, any any person like my husband, I'll give you guys you guys know my husband's been in prison, he's been incarcerated. You know, he puts on his li- like his time when he's supposed to be just pro-, pro officer. He misses it. It's not on me. You know, it's on him. I do have reminders for him and we have it on the calendar for him, you guys, but don't worry, it's not him. He's his all been good. Like he has his random checks every week and stuff like that and um they come to our house, whatever. So it's not him. But this is somebody else, okay? That like I said, this person and like this person would have to do like thirty to sixty days in in jail minimum. It could be longer. Someone may be doing prison time, okay? But they have to at least sit thirty days. This could be over like a um Danko violation, because I did say something about restraining order, a Danko violation, or it could be over a DWI. Okay? It could be over a DWI. You know, not following that cert somebody having a DWI and drinking and not seeing pro officer or not going to AA or NA or whatever it is. And like you're supposed to follow those those guidelines and you messed up. So yeah. My hands are like cold. Wow. Look at that. Isn't it kind of mystery stuff here? Like, kind of, woo. It's a full moon, you guys. You might not see this on the full moon. I don't know when I'm going to publish this video. But. Wow. Oh. Whatever is happening in this situation, it, it's, it's unfolding because it's, it's meant to. Okay? It's unfolding because it's meant to. So, if this person gets arrested... It, 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 it's it's their destiny. It's it's their fate. Okay, it's their fate. They they did what they did, and now they have to pay the price. So, um, don't feel guilty. You know, don't let them guilt trip you either. Okay, don't let them guilt trip you and make you feel like it's your fault or you did something wrong because it's not your fault. Okay, it's not. We all have choices. We all we have choices. We all have free will, and we we gotta deal with that. Okay. So I hope this helps somebody. I absolutely love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Okay, okay, sorry. I'm, I'm hearing this because there could be some tr- a child involved. I'm hearing somebody could feel bad because, like, this could be the child of your pa- or your your pa- your child's um, father or mother, okay? And so that could be why you feel bad because this could be, you know, your baby mom, baby dad, your 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 husband, your wife, or but your your children's father or mother, you know? And that's why you kind of feel guilty because you you feel like you you weren't there to help them enough, okay? I'm hearing something about you were. You, that's why you feel guilty. You weren't able to help them when they needed you. And sometimes, you know, you try to offer help, but if they don't want to listen, that's not on you. Okay, there's a lot of people I try to help in active addiction, try to help them stay out of trouble, help them get clean and sober, tell them to come stay at my house for a day or two so they can get away from the stuff, and they chose not to. Okay, they chose not to. They chose to stay in a situation that they thought they wanted to stay in. Okay, they didn't want to get away from that. And that's what I'm hearing. This individual that's going to be sitting time behind bars, they... They don't want to grow up, okay? They don't want to change their ways, or they would have, okay? They don't want to take full responsibility of their actions. They don't want to man up or woman up, okay? They, I'm hearing this could be like a babyish or childish energy where they feel like that um, people have to, like, bow down to them. So kind of like a God complex to bow down to them and, like, help them and do things for them. But it's their responsibility. If they're over 18, it's their responsibility. Okay? They're an adult. Okay? They did something illegal. They broke the law. And now they have to deal with the consequences. That's not your fault. Even if it is a loved one. Even if it's a friend. It's not your fault. So I'm hearing stop blaming yourself. And there's a siren coming by. So there's the confirmation an omen with the sirens. There could be an accident probably right now with this fog. People are driving slow. It's 60 miles per hour there. They're going pretty slow right there. So, it's pretty pretty foggy out for only being 4.30. It's starting to get supposed to get dark now. You guys, I am careful, okay? I know this road that I'm on. I know um, where I'm going. I'm actually walking back home now. So... But I don't know if you guys heard that sirens. It might have. It's gone now. It went the opposite direction.
I'm hearing something about like you you don't want your kids somebody doesn't want their kids to know their 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 father or mother or grandparent or, or uncle or aunt that they've they've been in trouble, they've been in jail. Somebody's trying to hide somebody from hide something about going somebody to go to jail too. Somebody doesn't want the family to know that this person went to jail, but it's they going to jail, it's gonna be like publicly known. Okay. That happens a lot with families. A lot of families don't want to know, don't want people to know that their loved one, their child, their husband, their wife, whatever, their parent, whatever, an uncle, brother, sister went to jail. They're embarrassed by it and stuff. I was very embarrassed by when I went to jail, you guys. I was. I had a really, really good job. You know, I had a really, really good job. And I loved my job. And I was on the news. And when I was on the news, it was embarrassing because now my whole work knew that I got busted with drugs, you know? Like, now they know that I'm a, I was a meth addict, you know, and, like, doing drugs. And they told me I'd come back if I got the help I needed to go to treatment and stuff like that. And took care of what I needed to take care of. And I was so embarrassed that I said, screw it, I'm not going back there. Like, But I ultimately knew I had something else to do in my life. But I still, I ran into a few of them from a job. And I still, not now, but, like, two years ago, I ran into a couple. I was so embarrassed, like, you know, being all over you know, the city's news stations all around the, the surrounding areas and putting me out to be a bad mom when my daughter wasn't even around. She wasn't even around, you guys. Like, they put it in there that I had CPS, that I had my child in the car with drugs and stuff, but she wasn't even with me, saying that, like, I was a big drug dealer, drug user. At the time, I wasn't even a dealer. I was just a user. I wasn't a big-time user either, but I used but not like they said I was. After that, after I lost my job, was when I really went into overly active addiction. And I mean, every single day. Before, it was only on the weekends and, like, when I didn't have to work. Or then it went into fucking having to do it every day because I was so embarrassed. And I, my life was falling apart. So, but as I said, I had to own up to my actions. I had to deal with the consequences. I got caught with six grams. You know, they consider it a school zone because I lived by a school zone. So it went up to a higher degree. And then after that, I got charged with freaking sales, sales. First grade sales to people that I knew. They, they were setting me up after I lost my job because I had to make money somehow. I had to pr- provide for myself. So I was out hustling a white female selling methamphetamines. People thought it was pretty weird. You know. But I, I was doing it to, to provide for myself to support myself and my family and I trusted the wrong people I trusted the people that got me on my first degree was my my uncle my uncle got me on a first degree and I was one of my closest friends that got me on a first degree wore a wire on me set me up did a control buy on me so you know I had to like I said I had to deal with it I had to own up to it I had to plead guilty I had I pled guilty to it they had me I wasn't gonna lie about it they had me on a fucking recording like there's no way out of it. And I remember where the, what it was. They, when I got my paperwork, it tells me exactly where I was at. It doesn't give you the names. It gives you the CI number. But, you know, me, I remember where this took place. You know, where it happened. So I knew who it was. Because I only met one person at that place. And I only met that one person. That person was my uncle. And that was my friend Anna. Like, supposedly friend Anna, you know? Like, so... And... But you can't feel guilty for somebody else for their actions. Like, you know. Oh, the sirens just went off. They were still on. They went off. Would I take it back? No. I want, you know, if I had to go back in time, you guys, I want, I want, I would have done the same thing over. Okay. I would have done the same thing over so I can learn that lesson. And I'm a person that knows that if I, if I do something by break a uh, sin, by uh, committing a sin, breaking the law, you know what I mean? Like doing something illegally. I know that I need to own up to that. I know that I need to fix my mistake. I know I need to, you know, take responsibility for my actions. So somebody needs to do that here too. That's kind of why I had me talk about this is somebody actually needs to take, take responsibility for their own actions of what they did. Okay. So. You know, it, ha- it happens to good people. I would, you know, uh, people get on drugs all the time and it, it, it could be, uh, it could be anybody, it can be anybody. And they, it doesn't mean they're the bad people. I was never a bad person. I was always a good person. I just made bad choices, bad decisions, wanting to get high, wanting to feel that, that, 
experience, that knowing, feeling, whatever it is, people call euphoria, like, I'm not, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's a feeling that you, that people that have never used is not going to understand. That's all I can say. Like, the feeling that I had when I used is not a feeling like anybody else. Like, people that have not used ever, they're not going to understand that feeling. They're not going to understand the situation, what they go through. And what you need to do when your life is falling apart and, like, you're just trying to. And that's why I'm hearing this person possibly, life started falling apart. And then they went one bad, one bad decision to another one, to another one, to another one. And then they dug themselves such a deep hole. But, yeah. So, I hope this helps. I love you guys. I absolutely love you. It's raining now. I'm walking in the freaking rain. Yeah. You guys, it's January. January. Oh, gosh. 25th. Oh, my God. This was my... Wow. I... This would have been my wedding anniversary with my ex-husband, you guys. So, we got married in 2008. Of 2000... Yeah. January 25th, 2008. And, wow. I'm out walking and stuff like that right now. But, look at it. It's January 25th and it's, it's raining. <laughs> It's not snowing, it's raining. And the snow is already melting out of you guys from a couple days ago. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, if you deal with this, if you have a loved one that's, like, dealing with this too, do, you guys, don't feel guilty, okay? Do not, okay? They're, they have to learn. They have to learn. And that's what I was trying to get at. I had to learn my lessons. I had to learn, my, learn from my mistakes. So, I love you guys. I, I really do. And I really, really hope this message helps somebody. Um, if you were experiencing something that I went through or whatever, or a loved one, um, oh, Stonebill Trail. I love you guys. Love, peace, light, heal, namaste.